Hi guys, this is Jake at Canadian Cutting Edge, and today we're taking a look at this little fixed blade. It's a no-brand knife. There's no brand name on it. There's no model name or anything. Uh, they say that it's D2 steel. I'm not convinced, but it's a reasonable steel, and it comes in at a very good price, and uh, it fits in the hand quite well. Just a very simple, minimalist fixed blade. We've got uh, Kydex, um, or a very good knockoff of Kydex. And the sheath is held together uh, or held on your pants with this tech lock that you can either mount uh, horizontally, you know, along your belt line this way, or you can mount it across your belt vertically. And it, for being a simple little knife, it's actually quite nice. Now, before we start the desktop review of this, I want to remind you guys that it's my channel's anniversary on the 31st of March. One of the Patreon supporters is going to win this. There'll be other knives that people can win. Uh, just regular subscribers, you're going to be able to win. So be on the lookout for my video coming out. I hope to put it out on March 31st, because that's my actual second anniversary date. Uh, this knife is worth, well, on sale right now at 45% off. It's 120 US dollars. That's over 150 Canadian dollars on the sale price. And I'm willing to give this away, you know, largely because GearBest gave this to me to review. And so I'm going to pass on the favor. And one of my Patreon supporters is going to win this. But my regular subscribers, you're going to be able to win really good prizes as well. Different kinds of knives and things. I'm going to be spreading the love around. So stay tuned for my second anniversary video. And now let's get to the tabletop and take a good look at this thing. Stick around. So I'm calling this a minimal minimal a minimalist knife <laughs> because it is a very very minimal kind of knife. And oh I forgot to I'm going to take this thing apart and I'm going to check. They say this is G10 uh, with, to my eye, it just looks like wood. Uh, so I'm going to take this apart. Watch the screen right here, and it'll give my final opinion on what I think this handle is made out of. Um, shouldn't be too hard to take out because it's a nice hex screw, also called Allen screws. And so you've just got these two slabs on either, well, one slab on either side, these two slabs. And then you've just got, you know, a piece of steel for the blade. It's a very, very simple design. Uh, they say it's D2 steel. Um, I haven't sharpened it or anything yet. I don't think it's D2 steel, though. It just, I just don't get that sense out of it. You've got this uh, titanium coating on it. It looks pretty good. You've got a forward choil here, but I'm not really calling it a forward choil because the handle's so short here. I think it's just the way that you're going to hold the knife. And so I usually don't like forward choils on fixed blades, but I'm not thinking of this as a forward choil. Uh, I'll give you a wider shot in just a little while of this. You've got thick tang for this blade, nice drop point, lots of belly, and a short little straight area back here. A huge lanyard hole right there, easy to tie a lanyard on there, and I like that it's inset instead of going through the whole handle and everything. That's a really good thing. And just basically, quickly, this sheathing is really good. I think it's a very nice, thin um, Kydex or a Kydex knockoff. And uh, the way they've set it up, it holds really well. They've left just enough material there to grip the uh, blade, the handle. Very, very slight movement of the blade in there. Not much at all. Very good. You know, it's just a well-made sheath. And um, on the sheath, you've got this uh, tech lock type lockup. You can use it horizontally or vertically. You can adjust these, you know, to whatever size belt you have so that there'll be less play. You know, if you've got a narrow belt, you move those down. Uh, and when it locks together, these two arms lock up. And then you've got this piece here. And that moves forward. And then when it's on your body or on your pants or whatever, on your belt, this can't open up easily. 
it because it has to come out and there's pressure right here so nice little system there with that little piece there to hold them all together um, i don't usually like these tech lock things but this one's as a knockoff it's better than most uh, i do prefer having um, a sheath system that sort of hangs i'll show you on my pants I much prefer one where the belt gets attached up here somewhere and so the knife is hanging like that. Whereas this one, it's like this. So your knife is up high on your waist. I prefer them down a little bit. So the, uh, the alternative is to turn this 90 degrees and you can always wear it that way. So that's probably how I would use this. It's not a huge knife with the length and everything. So it'd probably be better to carry it that way. Before we do the length and everything, uh, let's just talk about how it feels in hand. You can grip it quite well, uh, you know, pinch grip if you need to, get that index finger in that choil. Uh, reverse grip, very comfortable because the tang is so thick, you know, your thumb across the back doesn't feel bad. Reverse reverse works, you know, it does all the basic grips very easily and quite well. So let's zoom back down in and do the dimensions. We've got a cutting edge of 8.7 centimeters. That's 3.43 inches. So good, almost three and a half inch cutting edge. Blade length, so I measured from the end of the handle material to the tip, 10.9 centimeters, 4.29 inches. The blade thickness, we've got 4.6 millimeters right here. That's 0.182 inches. It's well over an eighth. It's like three sixteenths. That's the number I'm looking for. It's about three sixteenths right here. Not quite, but pretty close. We've got a blade depth, so that's blade to the spine here, of 2.86 centimeters, that's 1.13 inches. The thickness of the edge behind the grind, this is a huge negative for this, 1.1 millimeters. That's how thick the steel is right away after, you know, you get past the shiny stuff and you get to the coated material and it's thick. Uh, 1.1 millimeters. I will double check what angle they did the grind on and I'll put that on the screen right here, the angle of this grind. And um, I will advise if I would make that grind more shallow or not. And uh, you know, we'll decide. Uh, this knife will be one of the knives that people can choose from if they want it to win it. I doubt anybody's gonna choose it. You're gonna be choosing the knives that are more valuable. <laughs> That's for sure. Um, the rest of the measurements, thumbnail to thumbnail, the handle length 7.75 centimeters, 3 inches. The handle thickness is 1.86 centimeters, that's 0.733 inches, so um, around 3 quarters of an inch thick this way, not quite. The handle depth is 2.72 centimeters, that's 1.07 inches. Uh, the grip area, and I measured that from my, you know, index fingernail to index fingernail right here. Nine centimeters, 3.57 inches. Oh, I forgot to do the total length in Imperial, but the total length of this knife in metric is 18.7 centimeters. And on the screen, you'll see how many inches that is. 18.7 centimeters. The weight of this knife is 153 grams. That's 5.4 ounces. Thank you very much to this really thick chunk of steel right here for that weight. You add the sheath in, you've got 216 grams, 7.6 ounces. How much does this knife cost? Well, it's not expensive at all. It's $12.89 US or $17.03 Canadian or 10.58 euros or 9.46 pounds. Not bad at all. Fit and finish, I'm just calling it average. You can see all the tooling marks on the handle scales like crazy, uh, but it's done well, it fits, everything's snug. It's not like you could go wrong very much with this, it just isn't. And because the sheath is done so well, it's not getting low marks because of that. That's a really good sheath for this knife. Um, other than I'd prefer a different system here instead of this tech lock. Um, it fits well in hand. It's a nice minimalist style. Lanyard holes in the perfect spot and 
You can get any lanyard you want in there. You can wear it horizontally across the small of your back if you want to, or on your waist. Um, the cons, it's a little too thick. The steel is too thick, and this little bit of handle here is too thick. Uh, if they started with a thinner steel, then they could have the same angle of bevel here and have a little thinner edge behind the grind. So it's too thick behind the grind. It's too thick overall. I'd rather have this knife be a little bit thinner and four ounces instead of five and a half ounces or 5.4 ounces. So if it lost an ounce or a little bit more, that would be great. And if it lost it all in the thickness of the steel, that would be perfect. But right now it's plenty thick enough and strong enough that you can do some minor batoning. I think, although I don't know exactly what kind of steel this is, you've got a nice sharp edge here. It's a really good, um, you know, beginner's knife or a knife that you're um, taking out as a spare, you know, or you don't mind if you lose it. One of those knives that you have um, extras of laying around in certain spots just in case you ever need a knife when you're there. Um, you know, it's one of those knives. I don't think that this is a knife that anybody's going to choose as their primary carry, but it might be good for all kinds of other uses, especially because the price is so very good. And it just simply is a good, robust knife. I wasn't going to do any cut tests, but I'll give you one. Here's that uh, manila rope that I've got. I'm going to get a good hold of it. And let's see if this will cut it. This is the factory edge. Cut through that, no problem at all. So thick behind the grind is okay if you've got enough strength in your arms. And if the factory edge comes pretty nice. And this factory edge is not bad. A uh, tiny little paper cut with a factory edge shows that it's pretty good. Not a bad knife. So thank you so much for watching my little video here. Uh, thanks for liking, sharing, commenting, all the other good things you guys do, like subscribing. And if you're a Patreon supporter, you're awesome. If you want to become a Patreon supporter, there are links down below uh, because... The best prize is at my second anniversary for the Patreon supporters, just as a way for me to thank them. But I've got good prizes for the rest of you as well. Remember, friends, always cut towards your chum, not your bloomin' thumb.